Uh, anyway, Paul Lennon, uh, I was a legionary of Christ, a Catholic uh, a religious order for a good part of my early adulthood or middle adulthood. And then I left and after leaving, um, we discovered that the group that I had been part of could be considered a cultish group. And uh, so for several years I've been working on that. Uh, uh, found a little organization to help former members, support group, etc., etc. So that's uh, basically what we're about. Um, talking about children, really what I'm going to talk about here is what used to be called a junior seminary or minor seminaries that uh, this religious order continues to have. And uh, that's the general gist of it. Um, so, or, uh, yeah, so bear with me. I promise not to go over time. And uh, I have a whole bunch of handouts, so I'm like I'm over prepared, shall we say. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't worry about that. But we have, I have the slides there in case anybody, it's a really small print. Uh, and then I have the whole article for you to take home and meditate on uh, for the rest of your life. <laughs> uh, with all my words of wisdom. So I'll just put this out here. And at the end of it all, you can uh, take one home to your children. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and actually, uh, actually, the, 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 um, the title has changed a little bit, I think. Uh, I, as I was doing it, um, some ideas came to mind uh, about career and life for closure. In other words, as you can see, do the Legion of Christ and reign in Christi because that's the, there's the uh, lay branch of this organization is called Regnum Christi, which means the Kingdom of Christ for those of you who are Latin, not Latin scholars. And um, do they exert uh, undue influence by recruiting members at an early age. So that's basically it. And the, uh, you may have learned from scholastic uh, philosophy, we always start off by asking whether, you know, that was the old Latin way of doing things, whether they do or not, and draw your own conclusions. Uh, these are some official numbers from uh, actually from the Legion of Christ itself, as I say, a bona fide Catholic religious order. So this is not some kind of fringe group. This is not what the Americans would call some wacko group out there. Uh, this is not some Catholic sect, as you might consider it, or something like that. This is a bona fide uh, Catholic religious order, and that's why, you know, it's kind of strange to be here to be talking about it and. I'm sure for a lot of people I should just shut up and go away. And you know, there must be something wrong with me because I'm, how dare I criticize or question uh, something that's approved by the Pope. And as a matter of fact, the Legion was, uh, the Legion came into disrepute through its leader, through the founder who was a very um, destructive sexual abuser and he abused his own seminarian so that kind of got people's attention uh, to some degree and the Legion was investigated by the Vatican in the Vatican's own way during several years there was uh, a, a visitation which which is a, 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 a nice way of saying an investigation by the Vatican some things were found but no major changes were made with the organization Anyway, going back, these are uh, the Legion of Christ, which is quite secretive, uh, now is becoming less secretive, and they're publishing their numbers. So this is a novelty, publishing the numbers for the public to see. Uh, and I usually say that, um, uh, that, the, um, that, of course, there's no outside uh, validation of these numbers. These are the numbers that the order uh, gives us. Uh, the order would re report to the Vatican, I suppose, uh, their numbers every year. They're supposed to do that. Okay. So anyway, the point is what? We have um, in the Legion of Christ, the, the minor seminaries or um, junior seminaries are called apostolic schools. Uh, it comes from the Spanish mostly, Escuela Apostolica. 
I don't know whether they use that in French or other languages, but that's minor seminary or junior seminary. And they came up with some numbers, as you can see there. Um, these are the more recent ones. There are 734 students, I think, we have there. Uh, as compared to 945 last year, the previous year. So there is a, a decline in the numbers. <clears throat> uh, but the, the fact is that the Legion of Christ continues to have these apostolic schools. Uh, for those of you who Catholics or Christians, you would have heard about the Second Vatican Council, <clears throat> which was a reformation of the Catholic Church from the inside and I was saying to someone I think that after that the the apostolic schools were kind of frowned on in in some sectors uh, of the church and in some places they they discontinued them uh, even in Spain where they would have been very very strong uh, in the good old days especially during uh, post Franco times in, in or during Franco regime times in Spain there was a lot of junior seminaries in Spain, a lot of minor seminaries. And the Legion of Christ had one uh, which Miguel probably knows in Santander, Montaneda Santander. And that was one of their main uh, recruiting grounds and the main training grounds for, for that. Okay. Uh, at present, the Legion of Christ staffs 14 apostolic schools. Uh, and they would say, usually throughout the world, hey, that's good. Including the United States, as well as Italy, Germany, etc., etc. So, so what, what kind of surprised me, as a, an insider or an outsider now, is that even in the USA, they have apostolic schools, where you would kind of imagine the USA, a very progressive country, you know, that... Uh, you don't have that kind of thing in the States, you might have it in other countries, but not. And you're saying, yes, they have, they have a few, I think they're, and they, they're, they've lost some ground there, but pretty surprising for me, being trained as a priest and in, in that very uh, conservative group, very conservative uh, training, but with a fairly open mind, which would have been part of my downfall as a legionary of Christ. You know, you're not supposed to question, or you're not supposed to look outside, or to speak with the other seminarians who might be across the way in the other seminary, and that kind of thing. So, quite, quite cultish-like activities in the heart of the uh, Catholic Church. Okay. And uh, this is part of the promotional uh, blurb, I think I put in there. Uh, on one of the Legion's websites uh, about this particular apostolic school, as you can see. Um, Sacred Heart uh, Apostolic School was, was one, and Immaculate Conception was the other one. So really catholic -y stuff here. Uh, um, but um, let me see what it's, it, okay. The Legion's Apostolic School Worldwide aim to give young men, I like this, young men in grades 7 to 12. you get the ambiguity there? Yeah. This is the kind of, it, it's subtle, you know. What, what men, what young men in grades 7 to 12? And of course, uh, I joined when I was 17. 17 going on 18, you know, like the song says. And, but, um, but when I got to Salamanca, I was meeting Spaniards and Mexicans who had entered at the age of 11 or 12. So they began their, what we would call in Ireland, their secondary education and going right into the, into the seminary. And I was also thinking when I saw this, that I, I forgot to use images, that if you saw the boys, you know, it, it might be strange now to see them in their uniforms, <clears throat> because in the junior seminary you would have your uniform, and you have your dark blue pants, your white shirt, nice white shirt, and your red sweater, because the Legion, of course, is military in a certain way, so military legionaries of Christ, we would line up before our activities, etc., etc., etc. So, young men in grades 7 to 12 who are really thinking about the priesthood, so you, you're assuming here that little kids uh, 
11, 12 year old. Um, I remember one guy who was a Mexican guy who was very proud of the fact that he had entered at 10 year, nine years of age. Was kind of, for him it was like a badge of glory, but for me it was like, oh my God, you know, little Mexican guy uh, recruited by Father Maciel or by somebody else. Okay, let's get on with it. And this is the description of like what it is. This is the, this is what, they, they God first in their lives with scheduled daily prayer. And some of the things that I that I thought were were important about this description is that <clears throat> they receive one-on-one -on -one mentoring from legionary priests to help them in their discernment process. Again, so you're going to be talking to the priest. Um, you're going to be um, supervised by the priest or by the brothers. And, um, but that's what I thought was most, uh, legionary priests help them in their discerning process and formation, uh, you, you know, that's, it's almost the same as brainwashing, just to, not to say it in those words, I think it is anyway, that you're, uh, you're, um, you're very often assuming that by the fact that they're there, they do have a calling to the religious life, and of course for Catholics then, Implicit is the idea of a, of a religious, a, a celibate religious life. And, uh, and when I looked, I don't know whether I'll say this later on, but I, the idea when I, a, a psychological idea that I, that kind of comes in here is the idea of foreclosure. Uh, I don't know how well known that concept is, but uh, I was, once did a paper on that, and I was very struck by the idea of foreclosure. In other words, uh, when you're choosing your career or your vocation or your, you, you, you jump into the conclusion before you've analyzed the elements, in other words. Thank God for slides, right? Uh, the Legion report that the Legion was closing eight educational institutions. Uh, and so there was one closed, one of these seminaries closed in Santiago, Chile, they had one in Cordoba, Argentina, they had one in Colfax, California, one in Porto Alegre, Brazil. So some setbacks, uh, three high schools, so in the States we call high school seminarians, uh, seminaries, uh, were collapsed into one. Um, I think Canada closed one, I'm not sure if they have one still, and in France uh, they had one uh, which is kind of transformed. Uh, we'll get into all the details. It kind of like became a more open uh, secondary high school, uh, but you'd still be supervised by the by the padres. This was something I asked Xavier about the French. Uh, did, did, did the parents have to pay uh, for their kids? And his answer was, "Hey, I'm quoting you here." He says, yes, they have to pay, but at the same time, the Legion claims they never refuse a child for financial reasons. So that makes you kind of feel special. And you know, we're going to do you the favor of, of recruiting you free. Hey, that's nice, isn't it? Sorry. Um, that's, this was uh, Xavier's information. Quoting him, if I misquoted you, please let me know. Uh, this is another thing that I just des described, so it wasn't only boys but girls too, because the Legion will continue to recruit for the, the señoritas consagradas, for the female members who are fully consecrated. They're not nuns, they're like pseudo-nuns, and they have promises, just like nuns have vows, and uh, that's a whole problem, you know, for, for them to explain what kind of a life that is. They call them consecrated uh, women, and they also have a branch of consecrated men. Uh, so both would be RC or RC, uh, Regnum Christi, men and and women, separate of course, naturally, and vows to celibacy. Now in this particular case, uh, they they had a problem with with uh, a group of young women who had left the training during the period of candidacy, which is just before they take their promises, and they uh, created 
a web page called um, 49 Weeks of the Year. And they describe in pretty gory detail the psychological uh, um, abuse that they were subject to. So after that, they kind of closed down that center and now they're opening a secondary school or a high school uh, to invite kids to come to learn English maybe from some Latin American countries. So it's always it's just a way of enticing them to join, you know, come to the US of A and we're going to give you like a little finishing school or something. Again, what's very briefly about that one, uh, so, so the members will of course, whether I say this somewhere, I'm probably repeating myself here. wanted to describe what that really is. In fact, after the, the very flowery kind of introduction of what a beautiful place this would be. And the installations are usually very, very attractive. So this for the young people, this is very attractive. I remember from my Mexican and, and Spanish uh, young kids, oh, we have a swimming pool, which back in the 50s and the 60s was a major attraction for some kids, you know. I remember the Mexicans were excellent for jumping off the high diving board. Uh, maybe that's what we all had done without realizing it. This is also part of what maybe I was subjected to, but at a higher level, this is the junior seminary. So it's kind of this, when you have the kind of the funnel vision of exclusively we're thinking about you and your vocation, and what could harm your vocation. You know, so you're going to select that. You're going to get a lot of what Stephen Hassan says, you know, the information that you get, the exposure you're going to get is towards that. So you're not, you know, I remember, you know, when you see the movies then, uh, if you see a movie, you're not going to see any love scenes between people because that's kind of taboo, you know. So there'll be somebody there uh, with the projector putting a piece of paper on it when those scenes from Ben-Hur Something as innocuous as Ben Hur might come out, you know, you might see Ben Hur kissing somebody uh, that would not be kosher. How am I doing time wise? You have five minutes. Hey, that's, I knew it. Okay. So everything is regimented. Besides, besides the priest or the, the, same, the consecrated I'm sorry, people. You have 15 minutes, sorry. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> so again, there is a certain amount of pressure because if you're there, you're expected to go to Mass. I mean, if you don't go to Mass, then I mean, you kind of look out of place because everybody gets into a line and, and makes a beeline for the chapel. I mean, what do you do? And, um, and you go to confession maybe once, once a week or every once. I know Miguel is probably being traumatized as I speak. Uh, you go to confession every two weeks, you know, because that's the proper thing to do. You don't only tell your sins, you tell your imperfections. And then you're going to have spiritual direction, which is a kind of a very nice way of saying brainwashing. Forgive me. You know? uh, and I have written about how poorly these spiritual directors are trained. Actually, they don't have any external training. They're trained internally. So it's kind of incestuous. Of course, here you could really, you know, that really I could really be triggered into wanting to jump out the window. Uh, when I think that Father Maciel, who was a uh, sexual abuser of children, submitted his junior seminarians to this training system. So in confession or in spiritual direction, he would ask them questions about their sexuality or their, their sexual problems and then take advantage of that to destroy them. Uh, this is just totally out of... Uh, it, it's just... Um, bordering on the diabolical, I suppose you could say, because the abuse is so intensive and so incestuous. And he was, and he was our father, Nuestro Padre. 
which of course was the name that the Jesuits used for Saint Ignatius. He wanted us to call him also our father. It's really an affectionate way. It's not the Our Father of the Our Father, really, thank goodness. Uh, at least in Spanish it is. In, in, in English it is. But in Spanish there's a difference between saying Padre Nuestro, which is the prayer, or Nuestro Padre, which is the person. So at least I didn't have that confusion. But I'm sure uh, the confusion existed because he was the founder and he was the father of the young seminarians who took care of, of all their material needs. He took care of all their, he, he fundraised for them, he, you know, he designed the college they were going to live in, he, he chose the colors in the, in the building, he, he bought the beds and the bed clothes and the whole shebang and he designed their uniform. This is my thing, so I would say, environment of undue influence leading to premature vocational career and dentally choice. I found this concept of foreclosure, uh, and the notes is more about that. Um, James Marcia in the States, I think, is like the, um, one of the persons who found this concept and they expounded on it. Uh, so, you know, when I found it uh, 40 years later, I thought it was quite relevant to what had happened to me <laughs> as a 17, 18 year old. I did a paper in that way a long time ago when I was getting my, my uh, master's in counseling. And so the whole idea about about uh, choosing a career and also part of your identity. And if you don't, if it's not done properly, then you kind of, you know, you... In, in my case, I left the Legion when I was 41, and so I had to start all over again, you know, because I, I was like a 41-year-old adolescent. That's how I was able to describe myself, I think, thank goodness. No? That's it. So um, you know, if you're, if you're, this is um, four years in the apostolic school, and then you would be expected to to graduate to the novitiate, which is that very enclosed two years intensive spiritual training, also isolated from the outside world. And I'm. I'm you know, using now what I know later, that uh, you know, if you discontinue, then you'd, you'd probably be continue. You'd be considered a failure. If you go into the novitiate, you'd be considered a success. Okay. But if you leave, then you're going to be you know, maybe have guilt or your self-esteem because you were a failure. You know. And the group helps you to believe that. Kind of summary here. This is what we were saying at the beginning. It kind of went out of uh, out of fashion to have the minor seminaries. This is where I kind of summarized the idea of of the undue influence. <clears throat> it's one of the. One of the orders also that has great, great recruitment. So one of its, the success of the Legion is partially its recruitment process. There are, there usually are quite a number of, of uh, members who are full-time recruiters. They're on the road all the time. So you would have maybe six for Spain and eight for the United States. They're in, they work in twos and they go all around the country speaking to anybody who answered Maybe to a questionnaire. Are you interested in becoming a priest? Maybe. Ah, okay. So we have your name and address. We'll be visiting you. Okay. So maybe they're just as bad as what the Jehovah's Witnesses are over there. So that's what I'm saying. Okay. I do have a. Uh, 
a young fellow who uh, says he committed suicide, well, he attempted suicide really, uh, but his dad saved him, thank goodness. After he left, he was just at this stage, American fellow, and uh, so he, he thinks I helped him in some way, I don't know how, maybe because we have a web page, etc., etc. Okay. And this is another, this is actually an Irish guy who's still in, officially in the Legion, but he's kind of out of the fold, and he's he was a, got approval from a Spanish uh, bishop, and now he's teaching theology in Peru, so he's kind of out of, out of the way. Okay, one of the things I'm going to say is, how much do I have? Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Okay, so real fast now, there you have my handouts. I have three copies of my best-selling uh, autobiography, of course, thank you, called Our Father Who Art in Bed. Uh, but it's really not about pedophilia. It's just that, that the priest was also a um, hypochondriac. So he did spend a lot of time in bed also with various illnesses, and that's why I gave this title. It wasn't necessarily because he was a pedophile and wanted to get the little seminarians into bed with him, which he did too. So that kind of, you can imagine the number of Catholics who would have bought this book, rather reduced. So that's why I'm trying to sell it today to you guys. <laughs> no, but if you, I would, I would like, uh, I have three copies here, and I would like if, if you took a copy, you would write a review for me in Amazon. Dot com, if you do that. But if you don't, uh, you, you will be punished, remember. <laughs> um, so am I, what else is there? Yeah, I, this is a joke. I think some people might get this. So at the end, you see the end, finis operis, final, la fine, in Italiano, Italiano, right? La fin, in French. And then in Swedish, it's slut. I just wanted to say, not you, darling, that's the Swedish for the end.